You can see how overcrowded the lab is as soon as you walk in the door. Evidence bags are strewn on the floor simply because there's no place else to put them, and the hallways are choked with file cabinets because there's not enough room in the lab's computer to properly store information. Drug cases and some homicide cases have been thrown away uh, by mistake simply because we didn't have enough room to store it. Earlier this week, Dr. Howard informed police agencies all over the state that the lab had had enough. As of April 15th, he told them, officers are going to have to start performing their own tests with portable lab kits if they are making arrests for small amounts of marijuana. In addition, he said, the crime lab will cut back on the number of tests it does on people accused of driving under the influence. Howard says all of this has been coming on for some time now, but this year, when the Georgia General Assembly turned down for the third time a request to build a new lab building, something snapped. Uh, we see the continuing uh, caseload mounting in face of an inadequate, or in terms of numbers, an inadequate staff and an in inadequate facility, so we have to do something to keep from our lag time from going from its current approximately 30 days up to three, six, and nine months, and stacking all this stuff uh, in the halls and uh, in our evidence rooms and being unable to move it. But marijuana and DUI cases may just be the beginning. The crime lab also does a lot of work with something called trace evidence, which concerns the small bits of glass or hair or rope found at a crime scene. This type of investigation has been especially helpful in the missing and murdered children's case, but Dr. Howard says unless the lab gets some relief soon, there will be cutbacks in this area too. Howard admits there may be some legal problems with all of this cutting back, but right now, he says, the mental health of his staff and the accuracy of their reports are his first priority.